It's a blessing to have a faithful friend. Jesus, you are the faithful friend I have in the intimate part of my heart. My faithful friend, you're there everywhere I go in my life. My faithful friend in the darkness, the light shone over my life. My faithful friend, you bring peace in my heart in the trouble. Faithful friend, you are Jesus. Faithful friend, you are Jesus. Fidèle ami, en toi je trouve la paix de mon cœur. Fidèle ami, c'est toi le repos dont j'ai besoin. Fidèle ami, tu m'entends quand je crie, même quand je ne crie pas. Fidèle. Dans ma détresse, fidèle ami, plein de tendresse, fidèle ami, toi ma forteresse, fidèle ami, faithful friend, you are Jesus. You have a thing for me, Lord. Jesus. I will never have a friend like you, Jesus. You're my love. You're my king. You're my friend in my heart. Oh, Jesus, you are. Oh, faithful friend. You never abandon me. Never forsake me, Lord. And then let me. Fidèle ami, es-tu, Seigneur? Hello, guys. We're so glad to have you guys joining us this Sunday. And guess what? It's the last Sunday of the month, not the year. And I'm joined by my amazing brother, Daniel. How are you? I'm great. What about you? I'm very good, thanks. How? And shalom to everybody who are following us. Exactly. We're so glad to be having you guys join us on this Sunday. We believe that God is going to do something wonderful in your lives. Just like we say, it's the last Sunday of the month, but not the last Sunday of the year. So there's still have time. We still have got plenty of Sundays alongside you guys. And we believe that God is going to challenge you guys as he's been challenging us. Yes. I don't know about you, Daniel, but how has is, how is this 2022 started? How has it been like for you? Uh, it was a bit difficult, but by God's grace, we are moving step by step Come on. and by faith. Yes. We are entering by faith. True. And everything is done by faith. Exactly. And when you do things by faith, it, it doesn't become easy. Yeah. But it becomes possible. Come on, true. I love and that. The, uh, yes. So love. we are moving in, exactly. in this uh, various possibility that is presenting to us now yes. by God's grace. Come on, that's so good. That's yes. so good. Like Just like Daniel said, I love what you said. It's not impossible, but it is possible by yes. faith. And we encourage you guys, regardless of where you guys are watching us from, regardless of the circumstance or the situation you may be facing, to just trust God, to just trust the fact that all things are possible to those who believe.
Well, you're blessed by a lovely, lovely Sunday service. You have two kids, so you are going to get blessed from a high place. Do you see God in the place that you have a high place? this question was online you've got something to say i see i see here great gracia thanks a lot hi gracia we're so glad to have you join us and we'd like to speak out to your children please don't skip the slide thank you so i've taken a friend share the link post the watch part we'd like to have everyone watching at home to please invite others because today we believe that god is going to move in our lives and we believe that if you guys were to invite those that you know into this life god is also going to not only bless you but bless those in your life and Can't you can can you just t- tell me uh, uh, Daniel like you know well, according yes. to you what is powerful prayer there, there could be someone out there who's probably wondering what yes. is powerful prayer they probably didn't watch last week's sermon can you just give them a heads up on what exactly exactly according to scriptures and what the pastor sure I'll share us on the last Sundays who was talking about the story of Elisha and Gehazi you know they were surrounding with chariots and horses sent by the enemy the adversary because the prophet yeah. was able to penetrate the the secrets of heart everything that was that was discussing about the word yeah the prophet was able prophetically to know the secrets and the strategies True. and was able to expose it to True. to his king yeah. and there was able by this insight from the prophets to yeah. escape from every kind of attack that's good so uh when when the army of the enemy was trying to catch Elisha because he was the the key man the man who was exposing the mystery yeah. he was exposing the secrets True. in order to arrest him yeah. uh they were surrounded by those horses sent by the enemy and he had was the the first yes. to be highlighted that's of good. his presence that's good that's and that's he was, and that's, he was crushed by fear that's fear was surrounding him and he was inside and he could not even move he was so so paralyzed by fear yeah. you know the first things when you consider things on the house good you are paralyzed by what exactly. you are saying because it's greeted on at your own high says true yes that's 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 real like you know just before i came at the back here i, I was having a conversation with someone who was also yes. there last time and he told me something he said to him like you know what really stood out was the fact mm-hmm. that he realized that sometimes in life we we tend to just pray for the big things and we we just neglect the the smallest thing forgetting that god is even the god of the smallest details sometimes when we decide like you know what i'm not just going to pray about this big issue that's around me but i'm only going to pray for the small thing that seems to be senseless like senseless to me and that's where god even moves like you know sometimes as christian i think we've developed this habit of just wanting to pray to god when things are really bad but we tend to just walk away from things when things are fine and i think what what, what i think if if you if I have to summarize what we spoke about was that And I think that's the case with some people watching us online as well is that sometimes our God is even a God of the smallest detail. The smallest thing that doesn't make sense to you is the smallest thing that you can even run to God with and I believe that and I know this not just that I believe but I know that God is actually going to change your situation through that small smallest thing that you decide to pray about. And we're so glad to have you guys join us and I'm I'm seeing more people here. I'm seeing more people here. Please add in your people add in your friends please invite friends over facebook on youtube real life and you know what guys today's going to be a day of miracles and we believe that Miracle god's going to move in your life yeah. yes what, what do you want to say <laughs> don't focus on what you're seeing on the outward come on focus on what god's saying to you yeah because it's the only way to hold for a powerful prayer true if you're not based on fear but on faith true come on i love yes. that i love that so love this that. sunday is uh, it's going to be an uh, a very powerful experience. I love that. God answering God. I love that. So yes. for those watching us online, we're we're about to get in the to the service which is starting yes. just now. So we'd like to tell you you can go on our website to find out more about our church. You'll find there if you go on our website there's a place where it said place giving. You'll find suitable ways to give in your offering. And the our website I even forgot the website to mention the website it's fila dash city it's city-exosmart.com when you go on our website you'll find various informations on how to give and how to 
to participate. If you've got a prayer need, you can even go there as well and write to us where we can assist you in prayer. And if you need advice as well, through our website, you can just fill in a form, even on our YouTube page, you can fill in a form where people will get in touch with you to help you in various ways in which you're gonna get help. Don't you think so? Something to add? Nothing to add. Stay tuned, uh, invite somebody as he says, and we really believe that you're gonna actually be blessed Amen. by watching us. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching us. Thank you. Assembly God Long it just to bring something that's of work that will bless your heart when the music fades all is trapped away assembly gone longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I bring you more than a song I bring you more than a song for a song in itself it's not what you have required. Lord, you search for more. You search much deeper within. For the way, for the way. Lord, you bring it to my heart. Say it again. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song is is not what you have required. Oh Lord, you search from more. You search my deeper within. Through the way, through the way. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about.
It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Yes, it's all about you. My prayers, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. i 
Somebody ready to say, God, I won't go back. I don't want to go anywhere else. I want to be here because here, there's change here. Transformation is here. Blessing is here. Good things are here. I don't want to go anywhere else because I don't know what, what can be done over there. But I know what I can get. In your presence. Hallelujah. Since last week I started to, to study and study and restudy the book of Philemon. And I'm blessed through that, 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 that book and how God is talking to to Philemon about Onesimus and all the stuff inside. But in the verse 4 or chapter 1 of Philemon, there's something that I want you and I to pray because one of the things that God wants to do when He wants to transform you is to bring you somewhere where you stop praying for yourself and start praying for other people. And we're reading the verse 4. The Bible says, I thank God. The Apostle Paul is saying, I thank God, making mention of thee always in my prayer. Tonight, I want you to pray for somebody, starting by your neighbor. I don't know if you greeted, you, 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 you just met him and talked with him since the, the service started. <laughs> But I want you to talk with him now and ask him if there's some prayer, uh, some, some requests. He, he has something. I know that he has some, some requests in prayer. So just ask him. And I want you to pray, not with him, but for him. I want you to pray for him. To be your neighbor in praying God. I don't know why God has just led us, led us into this intercession moment. But I believe that if we believe in, in the God who hears prayers, I think that we have to pray. And prayer should not be just personal prayer, but intercession also. So I want you to pray. 
please pray with me saying Lord I'm presenting you this I'm introducing my brother or my sister request I want you to do something for him Father I pray in the name of Jesus I want to be somebody and I'm here to support all my brothers and sisters so that you can listen to the prayers and pray and, and meet their needs. Lord, tonight I came here because I, w I don't want to be the, the only one person who has something to testify. I want my brother, I want my sister Come here with testimony in the next Sunday, the next month, the next three months, the next six months, the next year. I want something to be transformed in his life. I want something new in his life. Lord my God. The God who listens and hears prayers. You are the one to whom we come tonight. Bringing before your throne our prayers. And asking you to answer. To answer our prayers tonight. To intervene in the life of my brother. In the life of my sister. To touch this situations and to bring something that will be a miracle and testimony oh Lord my God the God who hears prayers people will come to you this is the reason why we came to you we came to you because you listen to prayers and you answer Heal somebody, deliver somebody, touch somebody. A miracle tonight. A miracle tonight. Father, we believe that you have heard. We believe that you have done something. Because you are able to do much more than what we expect. Than what we ask. Than what we think you are able to do. Because you are almighty. And we expect, we are waiting for testimonies. Next Sunday, somebody will come and say, Brother, you prayed for me, and I have seen God doing such and such thing in my life. The sixth verse of Philemon says something. I want you to pray now for yourself. I wanted you to start, for, to start by praying for other people so that now you can pray for yourself. The Bible says that the communication, this is the reason why the Apostle Paul was praying for Philemon because he wanted that the communication of that faith or his faith might become effectual by the knowledge, acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. In other words, you will not be effective in your faith until you understand and know what you have in Christ. So I want you and I to pray tonight and say, Lord, as the Apostle Paul saying, open my eyes, bring light to my eyes. Let me know exactly what you have for me so that I can be effective in my faith. Sometimes you lose 
courage or faith just because you don't know exactly what you have in Christ. So I want you to pray with me saying, Lord, I pray tonight, open my eyes, open my understanding, give me the knowledge of what you have for me in Christ. Let's pray together. Father, I pray. This is a new year. We just at the end of the first month, I want you to open my eyes to see and to understand, to know and to, to discover the things I have in Christ. I have in you in Christ. The thing, the good things which is in me that Christ is put, that Christ is, mani it should manifest in me. Lord, open my heart, open my mind, open my understanding, open my knowledge, open my, 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 my eyes. Let me see, let me understand, let me know, let me get in contact with those things. I want to know the glory I have in Christ Jesus. I want to know the inheritance I have in Christ Jesus. I want to know how to operate in the power that is in me. I want to know how to operate and to activate all those things that you have set for me. Lord, I pray. I pray. Open my eyes. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Father, as we pray, we know that you heard. Thank you for the eyes that are opened. Thank you for the knowledge that is inside of us. Through the Holy Spirit, we believe that you are transformed through the word that was that would gonna be spoken today and we will manifest Christ plainly in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you there? Praise God. This is an exciting time to be alive because God is in control and Jesus is Lord and the knowledge of God is increasing. Amen. Praise God. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus and at this time we come to lay our hearts, our minds, 
our intelligence and all that we are unto you. God, we pray that the hearing of your words gives us understanding, wisdom, revelation, God Almighty, in the knowledge of God. We thank you, God Almighty, because our heart is open, the hearers are understanding. And let your word, by the virtue of the Holy Spirit, be spoken to us. Use my mind, use my God Almighty gesture, my voice, and all that you can use to bring the knowledge of Christ to your people. I thank you, God Almighty, because you always do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask and think according to the power that works within us. We thank you and we bless you in the name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Are you there? How was your week? Great. So let me just get started my computer. There we go. So you remember for the um, first two weeks of the year before Pastor Atoms comes and Pastor uh, Eric starts, uh, they came and really blessed us uh, about the prayer, the effectual prayer. And, uh, you know, we are just blessed to be sitting on those under those people, you know, like the man of God, which is our pastors, our senior pastor, uh, we should not take it for granted. Amen. We should not take it for granted. And I bless the Lord for his servants. And tonight, I'm going, hopefully, to finish of what we have started about the um, time and purpose. So I've just rephrased you know, uh, the idea, because you remember when we started about, you know, like time and purpose, and we were talking specifically, and we still are in January, somebody say ne January, somebody thought January will not end, I've got news, good news, <laughs> tomorrow is going to be the end of the month, so can you imagine that a month has gone away already? The new year, new year is not new any longer now. We are back to the routine. And be careful if you have not started doing anything. All your excitement about the new year that are going to achieve this and that, if you don't start it right now, you'll be shocked to find yourself in November, hoping that next year, like 2023, will be like election year and then I'll be a government or something. No, that's just a joke. But what I'm trying to say is like, if you don't do something right now, time is going to fly. You know, like this week for me it was very hectic because um, we were like, we, I lost my, my, my cousin who is my, you know, like in Congo, there are no, in my family, there are no cousins. They are brothers and sisters. You know, when you say about, so my cousin is just like, you know, they call it what? Uh, as if you are just like cursing, you know? You say, you, you what? And if my, my father hear me saying that, he passed away. Huh. I'll have a good time, you know? But anyway, so it was so busy. I would finish work and I would go to my study and then I had to go to the, the, the morning sir, and I'll come back, you know, like trying to beat the couvre-fe. couvre is like with a curfew. Yo, it was just amazing, but God has been faithful to us. He has strengthened us. Here we are. And time is just flying. Don't think that time has been given to you just to, to wait for something to you know, like, to fall on your lap. No, if you don't do and maximize and make the most of your time, it's going to fly like this. And you start being bitter against people because they say that you, you know, you don't pay attention, you don't help me. No, 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 no. God has given every one of us. Do you, can you realize that to every one of us, God is giving us 24 hours a day, even to those you know, like rich people, billionaire. 
Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, all of us has been given 24 hours a day. So God is not a respecter of, pep, of person, right? So we were talking about time and purpose, and today I'm going hopefully to finish on those and have rephrased it. And the title of subject, the subject title for today is like purpose, understanding God's will. So we're going to read in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 5, that's uh, our main scripture that we've been reading through that, this series, if I am to call it that, that way. So it says, be, be careful then I, you live not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. So you remember we talk about what God is expecting us to do this year. And God, first of all, we say that God is expecting us to make progress. I won't go back to that. It took us like, you know, the old session to, 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 to talk about it. You can go to YouTube. There is those uh, video over there. So there's no excuse for us not to know what God is expecting us to do this year. And second, uh, second point was God is expecting us to be wise. Because according to this scripture, I'm not making it up, according to this scripture, God is saying to us, don't be unwise. Don't be foolish, but understand. So we understood what wisdom was all about. Wisdom is the ability to use effectively the knowledge that you have acquired. So wisdom will save you time, energy. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, she will promote you. Every time that I read the scripture and I quote it, I got excited. I don't know, it's been like over 20 years that I've encountered the scripture. Every time that I quote it, I got excited. It say, exalt her, she will promote you, she will put on your head a crown of glory. Can you imagine what God is promising us? So, you know, at times people are expecting elevation to come from, I don't know, the east or the west. It's so clear that... You get wisdom, wisdom will promote you. You can be hidden at the backstage, but if you're a wise man, wisdom is going, wisdom is Jesus. Wisdom is the word of God. The word of God is powerful. You cannot hear the word of God. So it's an exhorter, she will promote you. That's why I don't fight people. I don't compete with people. Ha! <laughs> When you come to get the knowledge of God, you are so confident about your, your life, about the promises of God. Wherever you throw me, ma, 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 I've got wisdom. She will promote me. She will bring me to honor. When I exalt her, she will put on my head a crown of glory. Don't compete with people. Compete with yourself into acquiring the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Wisdom is the principal thing. The principal thing for cake or bread is flour. If you ignore it, you'll have a soup trying to make a bread. You can come up with all the ingredients that you want. It's not going to work. Amen? So today we're going to talk about understanding the will of God. Because it's plain and clear. But understand the will, understand what the Lord's will is. God will not ask us. You know, people say God moves in mysterious way. What kind of God is that? God wants us to understand and to know his will for our life. 
So let's read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Know that I have already, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are beyond and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So here Paul is talking about the purpose of his life. He's saying that I don't see myself as if I have apprehended something already about what God has called me to do. But one thing I do, I press on. I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has, has also laid of me. So he's trying to, uh, to tell us that the reason he's trying to find, to hold to on to the things for which God has held on him. So it means that Jesus has brought him to his kingdom. He has laid on his him. He has chosen him. So he's saying, because of that reason, I want to know why Jesus has called me for. Why he has held on, on me. So now I'm pressing to try to find out. So I have tried to define purpose. And I have found out that purpose is the reason for which something is down. So I would want the media to put it on the screen. Defining purpose. Purpose is the reasons for which something is done or created or for which something exists, that purpose. Understanding the will of God is your purpose. You must understand why God has created you. It's for a reason. It's not just to be a part of, a, you know, a decor for somebody else to come and play. Purpose is much bigger than being in the family of God and going to heaven someday. Our purpose is not, I mean, our ultimate destination is heaven. But the purpose for which God has created us is not just being in the family of God, I'm a child of God, I'm a, you know, I'm a daughter of God. No. There is much Thing bigger than that. Than just being a church coming and worshiping together and being part of the family of God. No, it's bigger than that. Purpose. It's the reason for which God has created you. Specifically. Who are you? If you do, if you do something on purpose, you do it intentionally not by accident. So you are not an accident. I've got new, good news for you. You are not just an accident, you know, and thinking that, oh, I wish I were born in America. No. It's not that you, you, you don't have this, you know, people live their life trying to wish that they were something else. While God has intentionally created you. And you have to find that purpose for which God has created you for. And it tells us that you have to understand the will of God. It does not just happen that one day you woke up and you have a revelation for which God has created you. No, you really have to work on it. You have to press on to understand, that's why it's, the Bible is telling us, if you don't understand in the context, if you don't understand the reason for which God has created you, you are a fool. Because the Bible says, don't be fool. 
but understand what the will of God is. So if you don't understand the will of God, the implication according to this context, I don't want to repeat it again, but you understand what I'm trying to make. So the Bible says, if you don't know why God has created you for, you are unwise. So that's really like a diplomatic way to make it. But the version says, you are a fool. And uh, he has not come today, that guy, that we were talking about, the fool, because everyone is here. He understands why God has created him for. Amen. So, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, 1, to everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. To everything, there is a purpose. A time for every purpose under heaven. God has given you a time. As we have started, beginning of the year, talking about the purpose of this year. God has not given us this year just to say, Happy New Year, to be happy. And by the way, happiness is when something happened to you. Expecting things to happen to you. Happiness. But the Bible says, blessed is the man. Blessing is coming from within. Coming from your essence, your substance. Amen. Are you there with me? So, if God has given you a time, God is not wasting time. He has given you a time for a purpose. And you have to find out that purpose, that is your homework. That's your assignment. You have really, if there is anything that you have really to work yourself into finding in this earth, is your purpose. That's why people fight so much. There is competition even in church because people don't know their purpose even in a church. They are fighting for position. Amen. But when you know your purpose, you can be a janitor, but you know why you are a janitor for? For the glory of God. Amen. Praise God. So, reason for pursuing your purpose. I'm just going to give you a couple of reasons for you pursuing, pursuing your purpose. Number one, you'll never be bored if you do that. There is joy in working in your purpose. You'll never be bored. That's what the Apostle Paul was saying. One thing I do, you know, it's not like I don't know what to do. I don't know the last time I got bored. Frankly, I'm not trying to brag on myself. But being like, being bored, not knowing what to do. <laughs> I don't know the last time I happened to, to be in that situation. I've got so many things to do. I have so many books that I have to catch up. So many I never get bored when you go to internet, even YouTube. You got so many knowledge. How can you be bored? When you discover your purpose, you'll never get bored. You know, at times I, it amazes me. When I came back, you know, in Congo, one day it was like a specific night, and then the power went. I say, okay. So what's the next step? I saw, I was living back then with my father, you know. So I saw the youngsters, you know, the youth in the area. They took the chairs and they just went outside and they sat. And I was saying, okay. So nobody's asking why the, <laughs> the power has gone off. And nobody's trying to find out. And people will say like, oh, you know, I'm just killing my time. You are killing your time. You don't know what to do with your time? I didn't have anything to do, so I, I came to visit you. So you want me to do nothing with you because you didn't have anything to do? No, I never get bored. 
I really try hard. Even when I watch TV, even when I watch TV, I'm specific in what I'm watching. I don't want to be bombarded but by, you know, <laughs> I, I say it once, it was in the French service, you know, years back when we started. I say, I cannot imagine me being in my living room with a, telev a TV set that I have bought and I tune up to a channel, somebody is saying something which is up upsetting me. I mean, in my house, with my TV set, at night, watching somebody who's accepting me, and then I'll go to sleep with, oh, Mbokoyo, wow! How do you do that? There is something called remote control. Are you aware of that? Are you aware of that? There is something called a remote control. Remotely control that guy. Come on. I would not give them that luxury. No, no not, not in my living room. I pay the money for it and I'm paying electricity bill. But I'm allowing somebody into my living room to upset me. How do you do that? So when you are pursuing your purpose, you don't get bored and you don't get upset with people because you don't have time to, look at, to feed on those nonsense. You understand my point? Okay. Second point, you'll never be a blessing God intends you to be outside of your purpose. It's only when you are flowing in your purpose that you become a great blessing. Amen. You'll never be a blessing God intended you to be if you're not doing your purpose. Listen what God says to Abraham. Genesis 12, 1, 2. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Genesis 12, yes. Now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make a great nation. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. To be a blessing, you have to follow the purpose for which God has created you. God bless me. Yeah, how would he bless you? If you don't obey God, if you, are not into, if you are not trying to press on to understand his will, you'll never be a blessing. And by the way, being blessed is the lowest form of Christian life. I always say that. You know, the lowest form of a Christian life is being blessed by the highest form, stage and status, and being a blessing. Being blessed. God bless me so I can buy a motorbike. Okay, that's good. By being a blessing, you might have a, a truck and get so many people inside. You understand? For you to be a blessing, you must follow on and press on to understand what God has created you for, your purpose in life. Amen. Praise God. And the third point I want to share with you is we only get rewarded when we do what God has called us to do. A runner must run alongside his lane. If he goes outside, he's disqualified. You only get rewarded if you do what God has called you to do. Folks, that's why people, they don't understand. When you are competing with people, you'll get disqualified. You know those runners, they run on lanes, right? You know, when you look at the Olympics, you know, all of those, the athletes, they run, they, they are some tracks that they have to follow on. You know, when I was a kid, I would think, 
Why would those one have to make a huge turn comparing to those who are in the center? You know, you, you, are you picturing what I'm trying to say? No, this is your track. Everything is being equal according to the distance. That's why you'll see that those one are ahead, but they have to make a huge turn. So, when you don't run in your lane, you'll get disqualified and you will not get rewarded. As if you were at the extreme, you say, no, I will like drop in the center. They will disqualify you. And you will not get a prize. I used to think that I was a singer. Because I loved music so much when I was growing up. Whew, you could not compete with me. Thank God I was born at that time. If it was in this generation of YouTube, I don't know if I could have made some marks in my, I mean, my studies. Come on. I knew everything. From MJ to, I don't know, I knew all of them. Back then we had only two television channels, you know, but I knew all the programs. So I'm just, you know, at times I say, thank God I was born at that age. I'm not that old. Don't look at me like as if I was like an antic or something. I'm just trying to make a point here. <laughs> wow. So, what I was trying to say. So I knew all of those. I knew all of those. I thought I was a singer. Because I was like listening to my, the music. Even when I was studying, do I have a witness here? I would do math and then listen to the music and my father would just go, how do you do that? I don't know how my brain was working back then. So, I thought I was a singer until I tried singing. <laughs> until I tried singing. And I would encourage myself in the Lord. And then the power of his might, you know? And then I figure out this thing is not working. I'm not being. <laughs> Come on. I tried to play guitar, man. I did. Keyboards, all of this. But somehow, some. It didn't just click on. Within me, in my system, I say, okay, I just gave up. So. I have not given up on my dream because I bought a keyboard for my kids, so expecting maybe. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm trying to say is like, compete on within your lane. If I'm here, I'm trying to say, I give myself away. I will distract you because you will say, what a voice, God. Why is this God is... <laughs> So, I don't want to compete with the singers. I enjoy what I'm doing. I can sit here and talk to you till night long because I'm enjoying it. That's what God has wired me for, you know. These are the things that I find myself, you know, like alive, we'll talk about later on. And these are the things that I get rewarded for. Imagine if I'm a musician, I will never get rewarded. I can play the CD and I can make up music. God, you are great, your mercy endure forever. I will say the same words as Pastor uh, Tom Wood in the singing. I don't think I'll get broke. And then it starts, you know, like qualifying people, oh, they don't know the Lord, I have invested too much. No, that's not my... <laughs> That's not my domain. Before you start cursing people, just find out where God has called you for and stay there. And that's where you get rewarded. Amen. You know, we got so many greatness. I was watching, I was watching, uh, uh, listening to Bishop Oedepo on YouTube this week, I believe. So he says something that really like bless me. He say, there is always space. There is always. Uh, he say, well, there is always space uh, or so, a place.
for everyone in the space. There is always a place for everyone in this space. Every, the thing that you have to learn is to know how to operate your space, spacecraft. That's all you need to know. There is always a place for everyone in space. Just figure yourself a space. Everyone has his place there in the space, but we want to be in the bottom. That's why there are so many traffic, even at church. Because you want to be there, you know, competing. Learn to operate your spacecraft. There will be place for you in this space. Amen. There is a place for you. There is a space for you. So we got so many greatness that we have experienced even in our lifetime. Talking about Michael Jordan, you wish you were Michael Jordan. Talking about Tiger Will Woods, you wish you were Tiger Woods. Talking about, you know, this guy who had an accident, um, you know, the Formula One driver, Mark, it, what was it? Sh yeah, Schumacher, 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 I don't know how they pronounce it, because they write it somehow, some way. Anyway, that guy, he's great in his domain. You know, who is Messi? Everyone has a greatness. You, you will tend to admire them, to wish you were them. But that soccer, that basketball, that Formula One, and you can name it. Even in the boxing, we have the greatest. He called himself great, and he confessed, and he became Muhammad Ali. You wish you were him. We got Beethoven, we got, I don't know, you name those. Find your place and you'll be celebrated. Find your domain. You'll be celebrated. Amen. Don't compete. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John chapter 17, 4, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. I'm reading John 17, 4. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work for which you have given me to do. So even Jesus knew that he had a purpose and a time for it. He didn't want to become Elisha, Elijah, Moses, or going because he would cross Jordan River, right? But he never been uh, tempted to divide the Jordan uh, River like Joshua. He had a, a work to finish, and that was his assignment. Even Jesus knew that he has a specific work. The Bible says we are his workmanship. This is one of my favorite scriptures. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God has created us beforehand that we may walk in them. Walk, walking, walking. Not even work. You know, God has prepared work for you to walk in them. It's so easy when you find your purpose. You're just like, come on. That's my path of life. I've just walked on them. No traffic. Because God will make sure nobody comes into your land. Because you have found it. So, some more question that could help us to get started in the pursuit of our purpose. Some question to get you started in the pursuit of your purpose. What is now the screen? So I want to go to the first question that you should ask yourself for. What grieves your heart? First question. What grieves your heart? This is the first question you should ask yourself. What grieves your heart? You know, at times you, you get mad at things. You don't know why you are getting mad to that. Maybe that's your purpose. 
God is attending you to fix, to fix those things. Re let's read 1 Samuel 17, 26, 30. I'll read it really like quickly. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the men who will kill this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? For was this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his old brother, heard when he spoke to the man, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David and said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another and said, to this, said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first one did. Amen. The army of Israel were there. You know, they were seeing Goliath coming in the morning, in the noon, and in the evening, challenging Israelites. And nobody was really, like, frustrated about, the, you know, like, the scenery. It took only one man, David, a youngster, a teenager by then, I believe. He was almost 17 or so. To come and say, what is happening here? Why are you guys are so relaxed and then you are letting this guy who doesn't even have a covenant with God defy the army of the Almighty? So, I wonder why wouldn't those people were not as much as frustrated and grieved as David, because that was not their Lord. It took David to be grieved, and that was signaling the calling of God in his life. So he has kingship within him. That's why he could easily be grieved and try, you know, at times you see things. You would think that everybody sees those things that frustrate you. You tend to think that, oh, why are they not thinking? Maybe you're the person to come with the answer. I remember years back, years back, like eight years or ten years back, when we were still back in uh, San Pegombe, the apostle Roland Dallos really like brought a word, and the, the subject title of his message was, your frustration, your calling. What frustrates you is a signpost. Most of the time, a signpost to your calling. So I'm just trying to be practical here. For you to understand those things that don't people, people don't see. Drives you mad. Maybe you the one to come to with the answer. You know in the, your family... You would come, you know, <laughs> when you go, you know, this speech, I don't know, it's in your family that like people would come. There is no love in this family. Well, so maybe you, you, since you are the lover, come and pour out your love to us then. We learn how to love. No, these are the first person to run away. How could you say there is no love and then you are running away from us? I would believe that you now have realized that there is no love in the family. Teach us how to love each other. They don't pay attention to me in this congregation, in this church. Maybe you must start paying attention to those people. Amen? They don't call me when I'm sick. Nobody knows. Maybe you must start calling people. Because that's, that's what grieves your heart. And maybe... Maybe this is the calling that God is calling you for. Amen. So I say generally, God gives us a gift to fix the things that make us made. Generally, 
God give us a gift to fix the things that make us made. What makes you made is just maybe a signpost pointing toward what God has called you to do. Pointing to your purpose. What makes you made could be just a sign. Okay, let's not talk about Congo. But there are so many things that makes me made in Congo. Well, second point. What makes you come alive? These are the questions that you have to ask yourself into discovering the purpose of God in your life. What makes you come alive? John 4, 34, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And you have to understand in this, you know, Bible reader, this is, this is Jesus answering the disciple because they were traveling and Jesus was tired. He sat on next to the, you know, like, how do you call it? The pit, is that the pit? The well of Jacob. And he met the Samaritan woman. So they start talking. And the disciple went to the, you know, like the villages, the surrounding to buy food. And the Bible says Jesus was tired. Jesus was tired. But when he met with the Samaritan woman, they start talking. And the revelation comes. You know, like, oh, the word of knowledge. And it was like anointing come. And when the disciple comes, they say, Master, eat. You say, my food is to do the work of him who sent me. So what happened is like, Jesus was made alive by doing what God has called him to do. So when you are doing the things that God called you to do, you, you, you are energized. Even when you were tired. But when you, 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 you find yourself into that element, you know, like that purpose of your life, you forget about eating. You will go on and on and on and on and on. And then maybe your wife will say, are you not coming to eat? Somebody has to stop you. You know when Gary came here, he can be sick. But when he say, he comes saying, what is that? <laughs> You know, he's alive, he's like, that's the man that we know. The Bible said the whole creation is awaiting to the revelation of the Son of God. When you get into that purpose, you reveal yourself to the world. And you are energized. So what makes you come alive? There are things that you do that when you do it, you, you, you are lost into those things. You are lost. It's just like I, you, you want to go on and go on and going on. That's what makes you come alive. Maybe, just maybe, that's the purpose of God for you. Amen. God give us the grace. Where am I? All right. What makes you come alive? I was saying, Jesus said, my food, my substance is to do the word of God, to do the will of God, the one who sent me. God give us the grace to enjoy the things that we have, we has, that he has called us to do. When you are into the things that God has called you to do, he gives you even the grace to enjoy that. God is not somebody say you have to do it. You know, that's my will for you in life. No, it gives you even the, 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 the grace to enjoy what you are doing. If you are doing, if what you are doing brings you no joy, maybe it's time to reassess the path you are on. When you are doing something that is just like you are dragging yourself, oh, I have to go this, to this work again. Oh, you know, everybody is evil. They don't pray. They don't wish. That's not an excuse for you to work. But maybe that's not what God is. You know, so many people these days, nowadays, they want to be pastors, evangelists, prophets. 20, 30, 30, I mean, 30 years back, 
Nobody wanted to be a pastor in this country. So what happened? Is it tied up to the reward that they think? Oh, the image of the pastors and, oh, he got a car, he got a big church, he got... You know, Tom say, why is that many years back, you know? Everybody's an evangelist in his Facebook. Are we really doing and enjoying it or we are just competing? God gives us grace to enjoy the things that we are doing. If what you are doing, that I say it already, life is too short to spend your life, your whole life, in doing things that you hate. That is, life is too short. To spend your whole life to enjoy, to do things that you hate. Stop it. If you hate being an usher, stop it. I never... I never picture myself being a Sunday school monitor. No. I never dreamed of it. You know, looking after kids, going to the Sunday school. No, 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 no. You sit there. If you don't sit there, I will minister the five-fold ministry to you. And that's not my calling. So... What are you naturally, what are you naturally good at? Amen. What are you naturally good at? That could be maybe just a sign. You know when I see a brother Jose coming on the, you know, on stage, it can be P.O.L. or something. That guy is just a blessed talking machine. Wow. And he does it just naturally. You can wake him up at 3 o'clock in the morning. He can come and then <laughs> take you into the presence of God. Amen. He does it naturally. So listen to the scripture, what he says. And Moses was learned in all wisdom and of the Egyptian and was mighty in words and deeds. Now, when he was 40 years old, he came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one, and seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and invaded him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. For, listen to this. Yeah. For, he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand, but they did not understand. That was natural to Moses. And, and when it was 40, before even, in, before even meeting with God, you know, there are things in your life, as you were born, God has equipped you with, and you do it naturally. The Bible says the calling and the gift of God are without repentance. He does not repent because you have not acknowledged that he is the Lord of lords, but he has given to you starting from the womb, your, your, your mother womb. And those things you do naturally. That could be a sign for the calling of God in your life. I want to just today to be very practical for you because the Bible says you must understand. You must not pray about those things. You must understand those things. You must be practical. And Moses, he was brought up in the Egyptian palace. He could find himself, could say to himself, Oh, I, I'm good. My life is already settled. So I will get an Egyptian woman and I'll have my life. I'm blessed. I'm a prince of Egypt. But naturally, that was not his nature. He would have denied himself. You know things that you don't do, but you know that you have to do it. You are denying yourself. 
So at 40, he understood that I have nature, I, I, I've got something in me, you know. No, this is not just. This is, no, these people must stop killing each other. Oh, the Egyptians should stop. Making Israelites slaves and, you know, like suffering them and so on and so forth. So he understood it. But the Bible says even, for he supposed that he, his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them. So he had already those signals. He said, there is something in me, but before meeting God, and it took another 40 years before he can even have an encounter with God. And God would send him to do the very thing that he wanted to do 40 years back. Your dreams when you were kids, maybe, maybe, that's the will of God for your life. Just maybe. Don't think that you are naturally equipped to do. That's maybe. So just go through those things. Remember those things. What graves you? What makes you come alive? When you do it and people are even blessed, what are those things? What are those things that with your hands, when you do some, you know, you design something, you are in the computer, you, you work on a program and people are being blessed. Maybe this is just the time to press on those things. These are just the signposts that God is calling you on to those things. Amen? Do not be unwise, but understand what the will of God is. Do not be unwise. Amen. Maybe these are the things that God has called you to do. Amen. Have you been blessed? Can we stand on our feet? I want you with me to pray and to say to God, God, open the eyes of my understanding that I may know the hope that you're, of your calling. Make it practical in my life. Those things that grieved me, that was making me mad, I thought it was somebody else's responsibility to fix those. God, Is those the things that you're wanting me to do? Talk to your God. What you have understood. What makes you come alive? What is that is very natural for you to do? Say to God, I refuse to compete. I'm an original. I refuse to die as a copy. You created me an original being. And you have created me for a purpose into this life. I'm an original and I refuse to die as a copy. Can you pray with me, God? We thank you for your words. We thank you, God Almighty, because you have a purpose for us. You have a purpose for my sister and my brother, for your church, for our lives, for this country this nation of ours for this world for such a time as this you have created us and you have anointed us you have laid hold on us oh God I want to press on one thing I do forgetting things that are beyond and pressing on unto the high calling of God I pray God by the virtue of your Holy Spirit that you may anoint your people into those things that you have called us to do. Now that we're going to discover those things, I pray that your anointing pour unto us, upon us, the anointing of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Those all things are the things that you have called me to do, and I can perform it. I will run my race, my race, not somebody else's race, my race. 
the one and only one which you have created me for, I will run that race. I will not compete. I will not complain. I'll keep on blessing you. And to the very hands. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow, you may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if it's your first time to be in our presence, it's like your very first time to be in ECT, in this uh, English service, as we call it here in ECT. Can I see your hands, please? Your very first time. Praise God. I can see you. Can you just stand? So we can really like express our, you know, our joy. Welcome to E City. God bless you. We're really blessed to have you with us. You may be seated. When we will say, you know, like when we close the service, our brother standing at the back door. He will like you just go toward him. I will take you to a place where you know we won't just want to get it, you know, like, to to spend some time with you to get to know you and then uh, to tell you what is uh, we are all about but it's not gonna be long amen so in ECD you know that we give our offering as we entering into the uh, always we got boxes green boxes and the passage so when you enter that's where you give your offerings and your tithes and all the what God has laid on your heart so we basically at the end of our service we can just stand and then uh, praise God. If I, am I good? That's all we had to say? Okay. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your words. We thank you because your word is an incorruptible seed. Let it enter our heart and bring forth hundredfold return into the things that you want us to accomplish. We believe that we are people of destiny. We are purpose-minded, destiny-minded people. I pray that my brother and sister will not miss the purpose for which you have created us to accomplish in this life. As we will go before you, you will say to us, Blessed are you faithful servants. Enter into the joy of your master. We are looking forward to that day. But in the meantime, we believe that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. I pray that you may order our steps as we move forth and we press on into the high calling of God. Thank you, Father. We bless the week that is ahead of us. We declare that it's a blessed week full of your revelation, visitation, empowerment, blessing for us to be a blessing and discovering our purpose. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. It's good to have a friend, but it's a blessing to have a faithful friend. Jesus, you are the faithful friend I have in the intimate part of my heart. My faithful friend, you're there everywhere I go in my life. 
faithful friend in the darkness, the light shall know over my life. My faithful friend, you bring peace in my heart in the trouble. Faithful friend, you are Jesus. Faithful friend, you are Jesus. Fidèle ami, en toi je trouve la paix de mon cœur. 